Welcome to the Titan Tar channel. Today we have a topic to discuss about Russian forces breaking Ukrainian defenses in several sectors in Donetsk. Don't miss the chance to join us and share your opinions with us. Become a member of our channel and evolve your rank. Ukrainian sources confirm that the Russian army is advancing south of the settlement of Selodovo in the Tsukarino and Maximilianivka areas of Donetsk. According to Ukrainian military sources, Russian troops are trying to cut the highway to Kurikovo in order to cut off supplies to the Ukrainian garrison in the city. At the same time, Ukrainians acknowledge that a significant part of Tsukarino is already under Russian control. The capture of Tsukarino is strategic for the advance of Russian forces southwards, complicating the defense of Gornyak by Ukrainian troops. This pressure on the Ukrainian armed forces in Donbass is reflected across the entire front line, where Ukrainian resistance is weakened. The capture of Ugladar by Russian forces paves the way for further advances, putting Kurikovo at risk, which has become the next strategic target, followed by Selodovo and Pokrovsk. This scenario highlights the difficulties faced by the Ukrainian command, whose actions have led its troops into encirclement situations, resulting in significant losses. In addition, Ukraine's already scarce military reserves limit the effectiveness of its mobile defense tactics. Despite the critical situation in Donbass, the Ukrainian government continues to direct its reserves to areas such as the border area of Korsk region, where positions appear equally difficult to hold. With the Russian advance on several fronts, such as Pokrovsk, Kurikovo, Seversky, and Ugladar, Ukrainian troops are increasingly encircled in these cities. One such encirclement is located west of Nevelskoy, as a result of the Russian capture of Karlovka and other settlements. Another encirclement point is in the Maximilianivka and Ostroy areas, where fighting is already underway and Ukrainian forces are trying to retreat slowly while suffering losses. A third encirclement is forming near Pokrovsk, specifically in the Selodovo and Tsukarino areas, where Russian forces have cut off the main transport route, dividing Ukrainian forces into two groups. Under these conditions, Ukrainian troops risk being completely surrounded, as happened in Ugladar. Meanwhile, Ukrainian media avoid mentioning the defeat in Ugladar, which has disappeared from official reports, possibly due to the negative impact this news would have on the eve of the upcoming international summit. At that time, Zelensky will once again try to convince the West of the viability of his victory plan, although the response to this discourse is limited. Despite claims of military support from the United States and other Western countries, Kiev has received only a small fraction of what was promised. In response, Zelensky has continued to criticize his allies for failing to deliver on their commitments. A former U.S. intelligence official has said that the West's failure to provide the promised support has left Kiev in a difficult situation. Despite promises of vast stockpiles of weapons and resources, both the U.S. and Europe have sent only limited shipments. While these shipments appear to be powerful on paper, in reality, they have not been enough to equip the 14 new brigades that Kiev was hoping for, as Western reserves have been depleted by armed shipments to Ukraine in 2022 and 2023. Zelensky, according to a former official, is seen as a failed leader of a collapsing state. He is not receiving the military support he expected and is constantly fed broken promises and scarce resources. In this context, his stance has been compared to that of a cornered rat, willing to do anything to demonstrate that he is still in control of the situation. His victory plan, initially based on massive support from the West, now seems unfeasible without this assistance, leading to the belief that his new plans to defeat Russia are unrealistic, since Ukraine lacks the forces and resources of its own to implement them. Despite having outlined an ambitious plan, summed up as Ukraine will win, the reality is much bleaker, as the same former officer pointed out. Victory would only be possible with robust assistance from the West, something that is far from materializing. Zelensky seems stuck on empty promises, lacking the necessary means to turn this vision into reality. Even given the critical military situation in Pokrovsky, Ukrainian reserves will not be sent there, as Zelensky's office wants to preserve the image of a successful offensive. As reported by a Ukrainian channel, the aim is to highlight the supposed successes in the Kursk region, ignoring the defeats in Donbass. The Ukrainian general staff therefore continues to direct reserves to the Kursk region, 
instead of reinforcing Pokrovsky, with the aim of holding the already occupied territories at any cost. For the Zelensky government, victories in Korsk are politically more valuable than defeats in Donbass, allowing the president to maintain the image of a successful commander. With insufficient reserves to stabilize Pokrovsky, the strategy is to focus on the Sumy region, transferring troops to Russia. The losses suffered in Donbass are secondary to Zelensky's need to present himself as a victor in the eyes of the public and his allies. Behind-the-scenes information suggests that Zelensky continues to pressure his commander-in-chief to hold on to the Kursk territories, even as catastrophe looms in Donbass. The PR component is essential, as the government needs to show a positive balance sheet in 2024, emphasizing the conquered Russian territories and ignoring the defeats in Donbass. This official narrative seeks to create the illusion that setbacks do not exist, while the drain of resources and troops from Donbass continues. In Kiev, there is an acknowledgement that the Pokrovsk, Toritsk, and Selodovo region is unsustainable, but the successes in Kursk are used as a tool to secure more aid from Western partners. The strategy of prolonging the fighting in the Kursk direction is a long-term bid to garner more support from the West, despite criticism and the increasingly precarious situation. At the same time, Ukraine has reacted with indignation to statements by NATO leaders, including the Secretary General, that the alliance would not commit to shooting down Russian missiles and drones in Ukrainian airspace. During his visit to Kiev, the Secretary General stated that while he personally supports intercepting Russian weapons, such a decision is up to each individual NATO country, not the entire alliance. This stance has led Ukrainian analysts to accuse NATO of lacking unity, although this reality was already known. Ukraine is beginning to realize that in terms of Western military support, there is a big difference between it and countries like Israel, which receive a much faster and more effective response. The Secretary General himself has acknowledged that NATO countries have shot down Iranian missiles aimed at Israel with the help of the air forces of the United States, Great Britain and France, something that is not happening in the Ukrainian case. In this context, the Kiev regime is compiling a dossier on the alleged lack of commitment by the West to Ukraine's victory. Statements by senior Ukrainian officials reflect this frustration, with complaints directed at the United States for delays in military assistance, at NATO for failing to intercept Russian drones and missiles, and at hesitation to directly enter the conflict with Russia. In addition, there is discontent with Western countries' reluctance to transfer frozen Russian assets to Ukraine and their unwillingness to send NATO troops to fight in place of Ukrainian soldiers. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and share it with your friends. Your interactions mean a lot to us and help us grow. See you next time.